G'day, Center Mathematics. Thanks for joining me once again as we start our new topic of probability. Before we do that, just a quick revision question on something we were doing at the end of last term, which was the power consumption. So we have a 250 watt television running for three hours per day. Uh, electricity charged at 27 cents per kilowatt hour. How much will it cost you over four weeks? All right, so if you think you remember how to do this, of course, pause the video and try, or if you want to get a quick refresher, then you can follow along with me. All right, so the goal of this question is essentially to figure out how many kilowatt hours this TV is gonna be using to run for four weeks, and then we just need to multiply that by 27 cents. All right, so if we have a 250 watt television, the better way to write that is divide it by a thousand to turn this into kilowatts. Okay, because one kilowatt is a thousand watts, you're dividing by a thousand. So 250 watts is 0 0.25 kilowatts. Now, if we take the kilowatts, multiply with how many hours we're running this per day. So 0 0.25 times three is 0 0.75. And kilowatts times hours is kilowatt hours. Okay, so remember from last topic, we said that this isn't, this isn't kilowatts per hour. It's kilowatts times hours, okay? So if this is our kilowatt hours per day, we're doing this over four weeks, okay? So we just need to multiply this by 28 days, okay? Four weeks is 28 days. 0 0.75 times 28 is 21. So that is our total power consumption, or energy consumption, I should say, sorry. So now we've got 21 kilowatt hours each one of these is going to cost us 27 cents. So we'll multiply this by 0 0.27. So we get it in dollars and we get our correct answer of $5 and 67 cents. Okay, so to start off our new topic, we're just going to be doing a sort of brief overview of just basic probability of simple events for today. Okay. All right, so starting off with the key points of the lesson, first thing I want to discuss is what's called the sample space of an event. So this is something you may have experienced uh, in previous years, but um, when we're talking about sample space in terms of probability or events, uh, sample space refers to the, all the possibilities essentially. Okay, so the list of possible outcomes. So for an example, if, um, if I was tossing two coins at once and recording the outcome, and I'm thinking about the sample space, we need to think about what are the possibilities for the outcomes, okay? So for this scenario, there would be three options. We could either get heads twice, we get two heads, we could get tails twice, as shown below, with our platypus, or we could get one head and one tail. All right, so those are the three elements of our sample space, our three options, okay? Uh, for a bonus question, I want you to think about why getting one head and one tail is actually more likely than getting two tails or more likely than getting two heads. So of these three outcomes, this one on the end is the most likely. If you think you know why, let me know in the comments. And if you're bang on the money, you will earn my profound respect. All right, so starting off with a pretty simple example just to warm us up. We have a regular standard die is rolled. So six sides, uh, we're gonna list the sample space, all right? If you think you're pretty good with your probability, you can probably pause and try yourself, but if you wanna follow along, that's fine. So the sample space is our list of possible outcomes. So for a standard die, we just need to list from one to six, okay? It's good to use these fancy curly um, brackets to show that you've got a set. So this is called set notation, but it's not essential, it's just preferred. So we've got our six elements in our sample space. So this notation here, if you've not seen it before, this question is saying, find the probability of the outcome two. Okay, so if you roll a die, there's six sides, two is only one of those sides, so it is a one in six chance. Okay, two is one of the six elements of our sample space, so it's a one out of six. Finding the probability of obtaining a number greater than two, well, that could be three, four, five, or six. So that's four elements out of the six. So we can just write it as a fraction as four over six. It's always good manners to simplify your answers. So better than writing four over six would be to write two over three. Uh, for question D, we're finding the probability of obtaining a seven 
and obviously seven is not an element of our sample space. It's not the face on any standard die. So the probability of that would be impossible. So it would be zero. Okay. And finding the probability of a prime number. This is a bit of a trick question if you're a bit rusty on your stage four math. So prime numbers are numbers that only have two factors. So like five is a prime number because only factors are one times five. Four is not prime because you can do one times four, but you can do two times two. Okay, so five is a prime number, three is a prime number, so is two, and you can only do two times one. Uh, the trick part is that one is actually not a prime number because one only has one factor, not two. Okay, so two, three, and five all have um, exactly two factors, so they're prime. 4 and 6 have multiple factors, and 1 only has one factor, so it is actually not prime. So for question E, we've got 1, 2, 3 out of 6, and the better answer is, of course, simplified to 1 out of 2, or a half chance. Okay? Alright, so moving on now, that was a bit of a more basic example. We'll try something a bit more tricky. This question involves knowledge of a standard uh, deck of cards. Okay, so we're going to find the probability of these five events. In order to be really good at these questions, you do need to be pretty familiar with your standard deck of cards. So I find that some students play a fair bit of cards at home with their family or friends, so they're very familiar with this setup, although some are more fans of Uno, so this can be a bit confusing for them. So basically, we have um, four suits, other different types of cards. Two of the suits are red. Two of the suits are black. If you already know all of this, feel free to skip ahead. But there are a few tricks that I use to help students memorize the different elements of this deck. So what I do is you can relate all of these cards to facts about a year. Okay, bear with me. So for example, um, like I said, there's four suits. There's spade, diamond, heart, and clubs. Uh, sorry, spades here and clubs is here. Uh, the four suits represent the four seasons of the year. Okay, there's two warm seasons and there's two colder seasons. So four suits for four seasons. Uh, we have 13 card values from ace through to 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, what this actually represents is it was what's really close to being 12 months, but what it actually represents is the 13 lunar cycles every year. Okay, so in every year, there is 13 full moons. That's what it represents. Uh, we have red and black representing night and day. So half of it's red, half of it's black, night and day. Uh, what else we got? Another cool fact is that total number of cards is 52. Okay, what else? What is there 52 of in a, in a year? It's 52 weeks. Okay, so 13 in each suit, 13 times 4 is 52. And the last cool fact, if you say ace is 1, 2 is 2, etc., and you say jack is 11, queen is 12, and king is 13, and you add up all of these cards, so you do 1 plus 2 plus blah 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 blah, and then you take your answer and you add 1, the answer you will get is 365, just like the days in a year. So there's a lot of weird coincidences between this deck and um, things in a year which can help you memorize if you're a bit rusty. All right, so to answer this question, probability of an ace. So the ace is one of our four card values. Okay, so there's an ace in every single suit. So out of the 52 cards, there are four aces. So we can write our probability of an ace as four out of 52. Or another way you can think of it is, well, in each suit, there are 13 card values and the ace is one of them. So you can say 4 out of 52, or you can say 1 out of 13. Both are correct because they're just the different versions of the same fraction. Okay, so again, this is a good answer. This one is probably preferred. All right, probability of a picture card. So picture cards are the royalty, the jack, queens, and the kings. There's three of those for every suit, and there's four suits. So three times four would give us 12. So there are 12 picture cards out of 52, or again, you could simplify this to three out of 13, because in the 13 card values, three of them are picture cards, jack, queen, king. 
All right, question C is asking for the probability of not a spade. So easiest way to approach this one is by thinking that, well, a spade is one of the four suits. So the probability that you draw a spade from a shuffled deck would be one out of four. Okay, one out of the four suits. So if there's a one in four chance you get a spade, there must be a three in four chance that you don't get a spade. All right, so one in four is a spade, so three out of four is not a spade. All right, a red four or a club. All right, so out of the 52 items in our sample space, we've got to think about how many of them are red fours and how many of them are clubs. All right, so club is one of the suits, so there's 13 of those because there's ace through 10, jack, queen, king of clubs. So there's 13 here. Red fours, there's two of those because there's the four of hearts and the four of diamonds. So there's two here and there's 13 here. So if we're saying this or this, we're putting it all together and saying that there's 15 items. Okay, so this represents 15 cards out of our 52. So there is our answer. All right, for the last one, uh, it's a little bit weirder. We have probability of a king, given that uh, a queen was just drawn. So this is different to the other two because this is kind of getting into multi-stage events, but I won't overcomplicate things. I want you to think about if you had a standard 52 card deck and then you just drew a queen okay so now there isn't 52 cards now there's 51 cards because you've just drawn one out yeah so given that you've just drawn out a queen what's the probability that the next card drawn out is a king all right so like i said we don't have 52 cards we've just drawn out a queen and i haven't said that we've put it back in so there's now 51 items to choose from and how many of those are kings well, there's a king in every suit, king of uh, hearts, king of diamonds, spades and clubs. So there are four kings, there's 51 cards left. So our probability is four out of 51. Okay. So that one's a bit weird because that one wasn't out of 52, it was out of 51. But yeah, most of these questions will be 52, luckily. All right, that's really all for today. That's just a bit of an intro to probability. We'll be expanding on most of these concepts over the next few lessons. So if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, uh, we are going to be yeah, doing a more, more deep dive into questions like these and hopefully you get a bit more comfortable. We're just going to finish off with a bit more of a challenging question. If you feel like you're getting these and you want a bit, something a bit spicier. We have uh, Stephen with a PH. It's just been dealt four spade cards from a standard shuffle deck. What is the probability he is now dealt a flush? All right, so if you don't play much poker at home, you might not know that a flush is what it's called when you are dealt five cards of the exact same suit. All right, so if it's actually a pretty good hand. So if you've got five spades or five hearts or whatever, it's called a flush and you're probably going to win. So Steven's just been dealt four spade cards from a standard shuffle deck, so from 52 cards. What's the probability that the next card, that is fifth card, is also a spade? All right, if you like a challenge, pause the video, have a think. Or if you've got no idea and you just want to know the answer, that's fine too. So first of all, to think about is how many cards do we have to choose from left in our deck? So we started off with a standard deck. We started off with 52. We just drew out four cards. So now there are 48 left to choose from. Okay, there was 52. We just drew four. So now there's 48 cards left to choose from, okay? So of those 48 remaining cards, how many of those would be spades? Well, let's have a think. How many spades are there normally? It's one of the four suits. So there's 13 spades. There's the ace of spades all the way up to the 10. Jack, queen, king makes 13, all right? But there isn't 13 left in this deck because we just drew out four of them, all right? So if there was 13 spades, We've just drawn out four of them. There must be nine spade cards left. Okay, so there's 48 cards left in total. There's nine spades left in total. So our probability, logically, is going to have to be nine out of 48. Okay, so once again, there was some extra information in the question that meant we weren't out of 52 because something had already happened. It had affected our sample space by reducing it because there's already some cards being dealt out. So, so two main takeaways are that it's really useful to be familiar with your deck of cards for probability 
topics or in this in this course. And yeah, always make sure you're reading the question very carefully as always. All right, for my class, here's the assigned uh, work for today. For you to have a go at from your Cambridge textbooks. Uh, you can submit these through Google Classroom. And if there's any questions, as always, send me an email or leave me a comment and I'll do my best to help you in any way I can. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys soon.